Do you think about the future? I think about it all the time. You know what else I think about? Why do we love cameras so much? Cameras let us freeze moments that would otherwise fade with time. Photos and videos become emotional time capsules, allowing us to revisit cherished memories, relive special occasions, and share experiences with future generations. In the digital age, cameras are central to how we connect and express ourselves online. Selfies, vlogs, and social media posts help shape our personal identity, allowing us to curate how we present ourselves to the world. Cameras are more than just tools, they are extensions of our minds and emotions. They shape how we see, remember, and share our world, making them one of the most beloved inventions in human history. We used to draw on cave walls and carve into stone, stone on stone. We have evolved because of our impulse and our ability to share our human experience, to tell stories. Now we have these fantastic machines. When was the first camera invented? The very first camera, known as the camera obscura, was a simple optical device used as early as the 11th century to project an image onto a surface through a small hole, but it couldn't permanently capture the image. The first true photograph was taken in 1826 by Joseph Nicephore Niepce using a process called heliography, which required an eight-hour exposure to capture an image on a pewter plate coated with bitumen. When was the first digital camera invented? <laughs> The first digital camera was invented in 1975 by Kodak engineer Stephen Sasson, who built a prototype using a CCD image sensor and recorded black and white images onto a cassette tape. Weighing 8 pounds, it had a resolution of 0.01 megapixels and took 23 seconds to capture and display an image on a TV screen. What was the first digital camera that was commercially available? The first commercially available digital camera was the DICAM Model 1, also sold as the Logitech Photoman, released in 1990. It featured a black and white CCD sensor, had a resolution of 376 by 240 pixels, and stored images digitally in internal memory, which could then be transferred to a computer via a serial cable. While primitive by today's standards, it marked the beginning of the digital photography revolution. Most of us have a super powerful computer with a camera in our pocket. Smartphones. Are we cyborgs? Yes. We are already proto-cyborgs, humans enhanced by technology, but still reliant on external devices. Our smartphones act as external brains, extending our memory, perception, and communication, while AI, cameras, and GPS augment our abilities beyond biology. True cyborg status will come when these technologies seamlessly integrate into our bodies, like neural implants or bionic vision. Will cameras become obsolete as AI gains power? Cameras won't become obsolete, but their role will evolve as AI advances. Instead of traditional lenses and sensors, AI may generate hyperrealistic images from neural interfaces, predictive modeling, or light field reconstruction, making physical cameras less necessary for certain applications. However, for authenticity, documentation, and artistic expression, capturing real-world moments will always have value, ensuring cameras continue to exist just in more advanced and integrated forms. Cameras won't disappear, they'll adapt, becoming invisible, intelligent, or symbiotic with AI. The act of photography may shift from recording light to curating perception, blending real and synthetic inputs. The question isn't if cameras will survive, but how they'll redefine seeing itself. Tell me about this curating perception. Curating perception is the art of shaping how others see reality, whether through photography, storytelling, media, or technology. In an era where images and narratives can be meticulously crafted, perception becomes malleable, allowing individuals, brands, and societies to influence emotions, beliefs, and perspectives. Photography and visual storytelling, every choice in framing, lighting, and composition dictates what is emphasized and what is omitted, subtly guiding how an audience interprets an image. From news outlets to social media influencers, Content is selected, edited, and presented strategically, 
shaping public opinion and cultural narratives. Algorithms personalize what we see online, meaning that perception itself is filtered and curated by artificial intelligence, reinforcing certain perspectives while obscuring others. Individuals and companies curate their own image, crafting how they are perceived through visuals, messaging, and storytelling. Curating perception is a powerful tool it can inspire, deceive, inform, or manipulate. It raises ethical questions about authenticity versus fabrication in photography, media, and AI-generated imagery. As technology advances, the challenge becomes balancing creative control with truth, ensuring that curated perception enhances understanding rather than distorting reality. In short, perception isn't just passive, it's designed. The question is, who's shaping it, and to what end? What will cameras be like in a hundred years? They will likely be vastly different from what we use today. Here are some possibilities for how cameras might evolve in 100 years. Neural and bio-integrated cameras. Direct brain-to-image recording, where humans can capture what they see using neural interfaces. Bio-engineered eyes with built-in cameras, allowing people to take pictures by blinking. AI-powered computational photography. Cameras that don't rely on lenses or traditional sensors, but instead reconstruct images using AI-driven light field technology. Instant post-processing with adaptive lighting, framing, and composition guided by AI. Quantum and light-based imaging. Quantum cameras that can capture images with extreme precision, even through walls or in complete darkness. Photonic sensors capable of detecting more than just visible light, expanding into infrared, ultraviolet, and even terahertz imaging. Holographic and 4D imaging. Cameras that capture full 3D environments, allowing for immersive experiences rather than flat images. Holographic projection cameras that instantly create lifelike, interactive images. Microscopic and ubiquitous cameras. Cameras embedded in everyday objects, clothing, and even dust-sized nano devices. Smart contact lenses with ultra-high resolution cameras. Space-based imaging systems that can see across the universe in unprecedented detail. Cameras that capture additional dimensions of reality, possibly visualizing time distortions or quantum states. Cameras will still exist, but photography as we know it will likely be unrecognizable. Would you want to use a brain camera, or do you prefer the artistry of traditional photography? Hey, I'm asking the questions here. Will we even have megapixels in a hundred years? In 100 years, megapixels will likely be obsolete as imaging shifts to quantum resolution, light field capture, or direct neural recording, rendering pixel-based measurements irrelevant. Instead of counting pixels, cameras will capture infinite detail at the atomic or photon level, allowing for holographic, multidimensional, and AI-enhanced imaging far beyond today's limitations. In a world where AI can generate images almost instantly, is pursuing photography futile? Photography is far from futile, it's evolving. In an era of AI-generated images, authenticity, storytelling, and human creativity are more valuable than ever. While AI may generate visuals, it lacks emotion, intent, and perspective, making real photography irreplaceable. The demand is shifting, not disappearing, fields like photojournalism, fine art, and documentary work remain essential. New technologies enhance, rather than replace, photography, offering fresh ways to create and innovate. Those who adapt and bring a unique vision to their work will always have a place in the world of imagery. Now is the time to redefine photography, not abandon it. What will we do when we can do anything? No, I'm, I'm talking to you. We used to draw on the walls of caves. Now we have these fantastic machines. I've seen the cameras of the future, but I won't be here then. I'm here now, so I'm gonna use what I have. I suggest you do the same. Oh, by the way, I actually have seen some upcoming cameras, and they're pretty cool.